welcome back to my channel. It's Paris, also known as The Sweet Pea. Minasan, konnichiwa, parisu desu. And today I'm going to be doing a highly requested video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys and talking to you guys about how I learned Japanese kanji. I've been studying Japanese for about five, six years now, and I feel like I had a pretty good grasp of kanji after a couple of years. Not that I knew like a lot of kanji, but the ones that I did learn, I actually was able to start using them, reading them, I was able to write them. So I'm really excited to be sharing that with you guys today. Before we get started with the video, today's video is actually sponsored by Sakurako, which is a Japanese subscription box. I'm super happy to be sharing this with you guys because during this time, I've been at home, I haven't been able to get as much stuff from Japan. So when you first open the box, it is super, super cute. I love the way that it looks. And then it says Sakurako and it has like a little note that basically just tells you about the box that you got. And this one is June in Japan, and it explains a little bit about the rainy season. Also, they give you a little magazine that tells you a little bit about what's going to be in the box, and then also where different things are from. Most of the things in the box um, are written in Japanese. Some do have English on them, but just in case, you know, you're like, what is this? Like, you know, it tastes really good, or I just want to know what it is. Um, there is a description, so I think that's really cool because when I lived in Japan, like, I wouldn't know what things said sometimes, and I would just be like, well, it tastes good, I have no idea, like, what it is. There is a ton of different snacks in the box, and I love it because, like I said, I've been pretty limited in terms of, like, the things I can get, and I have, like, a little Japanese snack area, and I've been refilling it, like, every month, so this makes it so much easier. I'm not gonna open up everything. But I will try wasabi. These are plum wasabi. I think I'm gonna try these. I just want to know what that tastes like. Oh, yeah, it smells like wasabi. Mmm. You actually don't taste the wasabi too much, which is good because like wasabi is pretty like hot. This is good. And another thing that I really like about this box is it's mainly focused on sweets and like different snacks and they actually give you such a good variety of everything like there's like jelly things that like go with tea Ooh, and there's these little these are so cute Ooh, i don't know if you guys can see it this looks so cool mm, and it's like soft and squishy i think it's amazing that you can get snacks shipped right to your doorstep. You don't have to go anywhere. All you have to do is go onto the website and select how many months you want. So if you guys do want to check them out, there will be a link down below. All right guys, so I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into it and tell you guys all the steps that you guys need to take in order to start learning Japanese kanji. Everything that I would have wanted to know when I was learning kanji. How I learned Japanese kanji. So first thing is to learn hiragana and katakana. So if you pick up any Japanese book, I personally started with the Genki book. It will walk you through how to learn hiragana and katakana and I also do have a video on how I learned that so if you guys want to check that out like a more in-depth video about just hiragana and katakana you guys can go ahead and watch that video. But yeah, so step one is learn those first. I think you can really knock it out in like two months. Spend a month on hiragana, spend a month on katakana. And that's how I learned it. I always have people saying, oh, I learned it in a week or I learned it in two weeks. Cool, whatever works for you. If you can learn it that fast, great. But I personally learned it in like a month and I felt like that speed was good. It wasn't too overwhelming for me. It was, you know, it was perfect for me. So do whatever works for you, but Make sure you learn both of those very thoroughly first. Next, you want to make sure that you get a book to help you. Some type of guide. At least for me, that is what really, really helped because it had so many different resources that allowed me to learn. I thought it was really, really good because the workbook gives you like different exercises where you can study the kanji. This is literally what we used at my university and I went to Santa Monica College and UCLA and they both used the Genki book. Highly highly recommend getting the Genki book. Once you finish that like go to Genki 2. I'll have links down below for all the books I use to learn Japanese. Is basically Genki 1, Genki 2, an intermediate approach and a bunch more so 
there will be a link down below. So next is actually starting to learn the kanji. So actually opening up the book and starting to, you know, study and everything. In the Genki book, I remember it started with numbers. So I was taking Japanese one at the time. I highly recommend taking a class if you can. If not, the books are going to teach you the same thing that I learned in class. But yeah, so we started by learning the numbers. Those are like the first things that you're going to learn in the Genki book. And I found them to be pretty simple in a way because the numbers are, <laughs> I'm just going to like put it on the screen. One looks like this, two looks like this, and three looks like this. So once you actually know the words, it's Ichi Ni San, you can easily see, oh, it's literally one line, two lines, three lines. And I was like, okay, that's not going to be too hard to incorporate and kind of swap out you know, writing the full word, ichi, to just writing a line. So I hope it helps, you know, the way I kind of explained it, like writing numbers in English, how we don't write out 22, we just write 2-2. Two, two. That is pretty much how kanji works. But yeah, so that is pretty much how I got started, was with the numbers and by basically writing sentences in Japanese, but starting to replace the kanji I knew with words that I knew. Okay. Well, let's say I was writing out the sentence, this is one. So normally when I would get to the word one, I would be writing that out. But once I learned the kanji for one, I would just replace that with the kanji. So there's a bunch of exercises in the book where you can do that. So you don't actually have to like come up with stuff by yourself, but it will help you, you know, start implementing it. And also just to note, we would learn around eight to 10 kanji a week in my school and then we slowly increased. Next is how I actually studied. So basically I just studied by doing homework, also by doing kanji sheets. So kanji sheets are basically just like sheets where you can write down each kanji individually. And I would pretty much just write down the kanji and then say the main pronunciation of it like as I was writing. Mono. 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 So that really helped a lot to like, you know, kind of say it at the same time. And then for the second pronunciation, cause some kanjis have more than one, I would just write that on the side, like right next to it so that I would remember, okay, this kanji also has that pronunciation as well. Sometimes I would also write out the kanji in a word if there was like two kanji that made up one word. And I'd pretty much just repetitively write it until I got to the end of the page. And I would do that for each one that was for the week. And that really helped me with memorizing it and with kind of getting the pronunciation of the kanji in my head. Eventually, when I started learning more kanji every single week, I would go on to Quizlet and I would make flashcards so that I could practice because sometimes it would help to like visually see the kanji and that would help me remember the stroke order because it is really important that you write the kanji or like draw the kanji in order just because it kind of flows better. And then also we did a lot of reading passages in the Genki book and in the other books that I used because you need to know how to read kanji and also write it. And also I did want to mention that as time went on, like I said, we kept increasing kanji and we started at like five every week. But by the end of university, we were literally at like 30 to like 50 kanji, if not more every single week. At the same time, like we are very capable of doing it. It's just studying it. And I feel like the more you study kanji, the easier it gets. And it would help to kind of like draw out the kanji. Like when I would be in class, I would see everyone doing this before the quizzes. They would be like, you know, writing kanji with their finger like on the desk. And I feel like that's when you really know it. When you can just draw it, when you're just, you know, thinking about it, that's when you know you know the kanji. And last things that help me with learning kanji is living in Japan. So obviously if you have the opportunity, living in Japan is going to help a lot just because you'll see signs everywhere. You know, you'll have to maybe type different things depending on what you're doing for work. Like it's just going to be everywhere. And then also some of you guys might have seen my older videos, but sometimes I use kanji post-it notes. And if you guys want to see a video about my kanji post-it notes, let me know down below. I'm thinking about making it. And that was something that also really helped me in terms of studying, like putting them on my wall and stuff. That is pretty much it. You know, I would just say try everything. 
Like this video is just telling you guys how I learned it, but you guys might learn it in a different way or you guys might have other tips. If there's different things that you guys do to learn kanji, definitely drop that down below. At the end of the day, all you have to really do is study. So I hope that you guys have a great an amazing journey with learning Japanese kanji and if you guys have any questions or if you guys want to see any specific videos about learning Japanese go ahead and drop that down below and once again thank you so much Sakurako for sponsoring this video I had a lot of fun trying all the different snacks so I will see you guys in my next video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and follow me on Twitch and I will see you guys next time bye bye